Hello there, Hollywood Time viewers. Judy Shields here. Today, we welcome back country music singer-songwriter Lacey J. Dalton. Hi, Lacey J. How you doing? Oh, I, I just, I'm having such a good day today. This is, and I get to talk to you, and I remember talking to you the last time we talked, and we had, we went pretty deep, and we got pretty personal with one another and with the listeners, and it was um, it was a good thing, and I'm glad, I'm very grateful to be back. Yeah, it's so good to see you again. You look marvelous. <laughs> Thank you. You're looking pretty good yourself. I was just Thank thinking you. how pretty your your long hair is. It's getting you know, long, I'm telling you. <laughs> but it's it's really pretty. I wish I could do that. My my I wish I could have longer hair, but I just you know, with the kind of pace I have to keep these days, when you know it's different when you have a big record company behind you and you have all this help and stuff. I don't have that anymore. I'm you know, independent artist, it's a it's a whole other world. And I just don't have time to do too much messing around with his hair. I just kind of have to <laughs> run a comb through it and get down the road, you know. Well, it looks but great. I, and I think I look better with long hair, actually. Yeah, it, it looks good. Long hair looks good on you. But that style looks really good on you. <laughs> well, thank you. It's, it's a style uh, it's of necessity. <laughs> <laughs> and I love your jewelry. Your, early, your earrings are beautiful. Thank you. That yeah. I, I, I really like silver jewelry uh, i like i i just remember the first time i saw you know um people wearing concho belts and silver jewelry some women i loved older women actually they were uh probably in their 50s and 60s and they had these beautiful skirts on which i never wear skirts but um they had these uh these beautiful indian bracelets these sort, oh, of, yes. sort of things and and um and I just fell in love with them as a young person. And I have always just liked silver. Yeah, me too. I, I love it too. It just, it looks good on your skin tone too. I, I, um, I never take these off. They all have been gifts. Wow. And cool. um, every one of these has been a gift. And all the things that I wear have been gifts. And once I put them on, I don't take them off. In fact, I have to, I was just in another interview, I showed... My wrist is actually atrophied. This oh, one has been <laughs> it's been here on me for 30 years. And I had one before that that I'd had for about 20 years. Wow. And made by the same artist, a, a Skokomish friend of mine up in, in Snohomish, Washington, who has been called a national treasure. And this is a, he'll never make these again. There won't be any more of these. So I, I think it's a, and it's more than just a bracelet to me. It's a, it's a reminder that, um, this is a sea monster. I don't know if you can see his. Oh, yeah. Oh, how cool. Eyes. And I always have him pointed in because most of my enemies come from within. <laughs> most of my enemies come from within. You can wear it pointed out, too, if you really have somebody after you. <laughs> to remind, It reminds me, you know, that uh, uh, I need to remember who's steering the ship. <laughs> With help, of course. But, you know. Oh, I love you and I. We just talk and go on like we haven't seen each other for quite some time now. One of these days, I want to get up there and visit you at the ranch. How is the weather up there? It couldn't. It's so beautiful today. It makes you glad to be alive. It is so beautiful. It's cool and perfectly sunny. There's not a, a cloud in the sky. It is just, it's just lovely. And um, it's uh, been a kind of a wet. Uh, we had a kind of a wet winter, so the. This is a fire area, so we are always yeah. paranoid this time of year when the dra grasses dry out, and we are all winter long. We we don't get a break from, um, the you know the the threat of of fire up here, so we're always aware of that. We have to clear areas like thirty feet around our houses and buildings and so on. Yeah, we'll always be safe up there. Well, today we're actually speaking uh, because you have, I hear, your latest single, Devil by a Different Name, uh, is available through Star Vista Music. Let's talk about that song, title and all. <laughs> well, um, I, I really like this song. It's a little bit, it's a bit of a departure for me. And I always like to do a disclaimer because this song talks to us all. It says, look at what you're doing. But I'm not just saying that... Uh, everybody else. I'm also saying it to myself. This song says, you know, call me left wing, call me right. We are split right down the middle in this fight. Divided we fall. That rule don't change. 
It's just the devil by a different name, boys. The devil by a different name. And each of the verses, um, it talks about uh, something different. One of them is, call me imam, call me priest. We are brothers separated by belief, but a loveless faith is a ball and chain. It's just a devil by a different name, boys. The devil by a different name. And it, there's a bridge in it. It talks about, um, call me brown skin, call me white. You know, um, call me gay, boys. Call me straight. Must we stare across this chasm filled with hate? If they say we're wrong and we should be ashamed, that's the devil by a different name, boys. The devil by a different name. Because a lot of us call ourselves Christians or spiritual people. And one of the most universal things in just about every belief is we're not supposed to be judging each other. We're not supposed to be othering people because their uh, skin is a different color or they have a different sexual preference or they're, you know, from a different country or they're an immigrant. And then we, you know, the Christian people, that is not, you know, spiritual people are supposed to be remembering the oneness that is in all things. That's what we're supposed to be remembering. We're not supposed to be trying to separate and other everything else. We're supposed to be remembering that when I look at you, the same spirit that is in my heart is in yours. And in that dog's and in that tree and everything that is. And that's what we're here. And that's the job. That's what we're doing here is we're trying to remember how to get back to that place of oneness and love and um, acceptance. And we're not doing a very good job of it right now. We are so divided in this country, and we really need to learn to build bridges. We used to be able to talk to each other. It used to be okay to be of a, you know, a, an opposing political party. You, you know, we all have friends who are on one side of the political uh, thing or another. But I remember a time, and I still have lots of friends that I'm really kind of across the aisle from, but we still can talk to each other. We need to have our politicians get there. We need to have the uh, extremists on the both ends of, of our two parties come a little more toward the center and be able to kind of hear what the other people have to say. You don't have to agree. Nobody gets what they want all, all the time, but you can come to a place where you get enough of what you need to be comfortable. And that's the song speaks to that kind of, speaks to um, building bridges. That's what it's about. And it says, you know, there's a still, um, uh, still small voice that whispered deep inside us. Listen close and you might hear it say, there's a light still out here shining in the darkness. It'll be here when you find you've lost your way. And so the content of this song is reminding me and reminding all of us to look at what we're doing. Look at what you're doing. Is, you know, is hating that person for, because he's different, is that really what, is that really a good thing? Does that make you feel good inside? No, it does not make you feel good. It makes you feel hate. And uh, I'm, I'm writing a song for this project. This pro the, this uh, song, The Devil by a Different Name, is part of a project called For the Black Sheep. And uh, all the songs are, are sort of directed at this. And I'm writing one called Everybody Loves to Hate. And it's kind of a tongue-in-cheek thing. But, uh, you know, in the last verse, I say, you know, you know, why can't we agree to just disagree? Live and let live and amen, boys. Live and let live and amen. It's not our business to pay attention to what's on somebody else's plate. It's our business to pay attention to what is on our plate, to eat healthful things, to think good thoughts. And it, it's none of our business to be in other people's business and other people's um, choices. It's, that's, that's not our business. Our business is to, um, when we're, especially when we're criticizing someone else, and believe me, I do it. You know, I, I have to work on it 24-7. I can be so judgmental. But when I point that finger at somebody else, the best thing for me to do is point it back here and go, okay, what are you doing? You know, how, you know, cast the first stone, which, you know, and, and that's, and I, we need to be reminded of that all the time, you know, and I, I particularly have trouble with uh, things like racism. I, you know, 
to me, real spiritual people, real Christians are not racists. I'm sorry. That is not what uh, Christ taught. Christ's most powerful message was love God with all your heart, mind, and spirit. Love yourself. And that's the hard part. That's not so easy sometimes. Love your neighbor as yourself. And that is the whole of the law. And all the other laws of life are based upon it. And guess what, people? That's what I came to teach. That's what he said. If you're not doing that, you're not walking that talk. So don't tell me how pure and wonderful you are. Because I know my own heart. I know how much work it takes. Every day. All day. 24-7. That's what church is. 24-7. All day. Every day. And it is not easy. <laughs> I just, it was funny. I read a horoscope of myself the other day. I'm coming up to a birthday. And yeah. it said, you know, oh, yeah, this is, it's great. You're having a birthday. You know, I'm glad you're still here. Um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's not going to be easy right now. You're going to have some challenges right now. And actually, I am. But I'm finding that if I just keep my mind toward the light, that, and if I, if I, Try very hard, and I've had some challenges lately that had me stomping my feet on the ground. I was so angry. Um, but during the time I'm stomping my feet, I'm also going, um, "Okay, uh, what am I supposed to be learning from this? What what's the lesson here? You know, help me." And so the songs on uh, the, the for the black sheep are songs that I think I hope will help us have a good look at ourselves. And if we're not walking that talk to help us get back on the path, that's that's really that's why I do music. It's why I've always done music. Yeah. I you know I remember I just found a note uh, on, a, on a CD that I made a long time ago called Survivor, and I have a friend named Rex Benson who's down there in L.A. He's a publisher now, but he was a songwriter and he still is a songwriter, and we used to write together. And I said, Rex, I want to write a song called I'm a Survivor. I really want to write a song called I'm a Survivor to give people hope because I knew there was a recession coming. It wasn't the one in 2008. It was the one before that. And I knew that people were going to be hard hit and they were going to have trouble, struggle. Yeah. And so I said, I really want to write this song called I'm a Survivor. So Rex and I got together and we tried and tried and we just couldn't come up with anything that was good enough. And I said, Rex, this isn't good enough. And he said, well, I know why. And I said, well, why? And he said, well, because my friends already wrote a song called I'm a Survivor, and it's really good, and you need to hear it. So Rex found this song for me, I'm a Survivor. It was really good. And so I I did the song, and I also called the whole CD uh, Survivor. And um, the song uh, went out, and I was really thinking I'd help a lot of people who had a lot of financial problems. In fact, what happened was I... I um, had probably, I don't know, maybe as many as 30 or 40 letters from people who were struggling with cancer or people who were struggling with having been raped by a family member or a family friend. Or, I mean, the letters that came in um, were, were very, very touching. And um, I just recently was going through a box and I somebody wrote me a note in 2022 about working in a mental institution. And she said that the people there were still playing that song all the time. And it's cheaper. It had to be from 19, I, I don't know. It was a long time ago, the Survivor record. And I thought that was amazing. And she said, yes. And she said, the people who listen to it most are people who have tried to kill themselves. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it was so weird because I had just reconnected with Rex after about 40 years. And I took a picture of this note that came to me last year. And I said, Rex, look, this is what this is what we did with that song. This is just one of many, many letters like this. This is why I do music. It's why we all do it. I, I think a lot of people, uh, I mean, a lot of songwriters are very spiritual people, deep people. You know, listen to some of the country songs now. You know, if you've got a dream, chase it. The dream won't chase you back. You know, if you're going through hell, keep going. <laughs> there are some very, very wonderful messages. And I think that's one of the ways that said spirit speaks to us is through music. I totally agree with you. That's for sure. How long did it take you to write this particular song? Uh, 
this was not one of those ones that just pop out. Um, right. It uh, it took a while to write it, um, not a, maybe three days, yeah. because once I had the idea uh, about it, it starts out, call me whiskey, call me wine, call me cocaine or codine, call me power, call me fame. I'm just a devil by a different name, boys, the devil by a different name. And then it goes on through the, you know, the other verses that I mentioned earlier. And um, it's really powerful. The last verse is about women. Yes. And I have had literally had women jump out of their seats and clap on that last verse and scream. Yeah. on it Because it says, I'm a woman. I'm strong. But I've been told that I am less than for so long. Yeah. Mm. Eve ate an apple. They say we're to blame. That's yeah. just the devil by a different name, boys. The devil by a different name. You know, women are incredibly strong. We have to be. Mm -hmm. We stay and we take care of the kids. Yeah. You know, we, we, that is, you know, we're, we're steady in that way. Um, I think some men are too, but a lot of them are not. Right. You know, a lot of them, the biological imperative is to spread that seed over as many fields as they can possibly <laughs> spread. I think, it, I, I think in some ways it might be harder for men. I think testosterone is a dangerous drug, just yes. saying. I know this because now I have to take it. Oh. You have to take, as you get older and you want to replace hormones, one of the hormones you replace is testosterone. And it definitely has an effect. You know, it definitely has an effect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That can be scary, that stuff. <laughs> well, it can be scary and it can also give you lots of energy. Oh, yeah. You know, if it's used like right. <laughs> I take um a, a thing called bioidentical hormones that come from the testosterone. I think it doesn't, but um, the estrogen and some of the other hormones are plant-based. Oh, nice. So there's not the cancer risk with them. And yeah. um, the, I, they take a little bit longer to adjust to. I started out with, uh, you know, the other kinds of hormones that they had in the past. But um, I really think that one of the reasons that I still have my voice is because I do take those hormones. I think that the voice has a lot to do with the hormones in your body. Yeah, your voice sounds amazing. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's a little deeper than it used to be. I that like could it be like the that. testosterone. I, I like it deep. It's good. And well, I like it deeper, too. You know, I remember in the old days, some of the producers I had, one of the record company presidents uh, had me sing, have I got a heart for you? And I mean, I and when I listened to some of that stuff back, I go, how in the world? What was I thinking? And what were they? They always wanted to sound like a little girl. And I never have. Well, maybe when I said, have I got a heart for you? <laughs> I mean, I was, I, it was like, when I listen to that, I think, what, what, you know, let me be who I am. <laughs> and if the people don't like it, then they don't like it. But, you know, don't try to make me sound like a 12 year old. That's why no you have an independent me. label. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I've been independent now for uh, about what? Was it 20 years? 20, about 20 years wow. uh, without a big Company. Good for you. Uh, we just had wonderful. We just signed with Star Vista uh, Time Life. Uh, oh. They are going to promote and distribute some of my stuff. And and I was surprised. I asked them when they wanted to sign me. They said that we want to promote your new single. And I said, well, have you heard my new single? And they said, no, we haven't. <laughs> and I said, well, you better listen to it because yes. it's got some lyrics that some people might find uh, controversial. And um so I was kind of sitting on pins and needles and they, I got a call the next day saying they love it. Oh, they okay. just love it. It's okay. So I thought, okay, if you can take, if you can take this part of me, then you can, you can handle the whole uh, uh, wackadoodle <laughs> thing that I am. <laughs> I was wondering, are you going to be going to the Josie Awards uh, next month? I think, right? The Josie Awards, is that what they're called? Oh, the Josie Awards. Oh, that was such a wonderful surprise last year. The Josies are, they're great. Those people are some of the best, kindest, most uh, supportive people I have ever met in the music business. And I was so pleased last year to get a Lifetime Award 
for yeah. being an independent artist. Excellent. And uh, I won't be able I won't be able to make it uh, this uh, this time. We're touring during that time. Okay. Um, but I'm uh, I'm looking forward to being able to see it and see you know, who they're promoting right now because uh, independent artists, as you know, uh, are pretty much on their own. Yeah. For and and if I think it's wonderful, I am like the worst clock <laughs> on the computer that you can ever imagine. My son is like on the cutting edge of like Google Glasses technology. He's like this. It, that did not come from me. That my that was not my DNA. And um, I think that it's a wonderful advantage if you really know how to use a computer and you know how to do social media. Yeah. Um, it's such an advantage. And I really don't know how to do that. I'm just really not good. I I don't know why. I I think it's a memory thing. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you will that. find as you age time and again, you will not be able to come up with a word that, you know, I spent six hours the other day trying to think up of the word for a paint scraper. <laughs> All I could think of was paint scraper. What I finally remembered after a really a lot of effort was I was trying to call it a, I wanted to call it a putty knife. But all I could think of was paint scraper. At least I can give, you know, an idea of what I want. But I'm finding, uh, and it's so funny because all my friends are having the same, having the same thing. You know, you're just looking for that name of that artist that you love that did this. And then all of a sudden you can't remember them. Oh, or yeah. somebody you've been in a band with for like yes. 20 years. <laughs> Or, yeah, that's like or your manager. Yeah, well, yeah. Like Leslie just said, or your manager, because I've gone to introduce her a couple of times. Go, this is my manager. And Leslie will say, old, what's her name? <laughs> it's yeah, I, I like feel things that. don't fire the way that you would like them to fire. Uh, now Leslie has to wear a name tag around you now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, what did you say? I'm Leslie will have to wear a name tag around you now. <laughs> oh, yeah, everybody does, not just Leslie. <laughs> oh my gosh so i understand you're going to be out touring we are we're going all over the place we're uh right now uh tomorrow we're going to go out uh, to westcliff colorado uh oh. to the equus film festival nice. you know that i have a, a foundation have had a foundation for wild horses since yeah. about 2003 or six i can't remember i never we had such a hard time getting our 501c3 because the lawyer who did the paperwork didn't do it right Oh, so no. we're sitting there going, where's our 501? Where is that? And finally, one of my board members called uh, the IRS and an IRS officer took pity on us because they saw what had happened and we didn't know what had happened. And we got our, our 501c3 all those many years ago. Um, we have a foundation called the Let Em Run Foundation for the Preservation and Protection of Wild Horses. So I, that is probably why I've been invited to go to the Equus Film Festival and be the entertainment there uh, this Saturday. So I'm really looking forward to that. It's in this beautiful little mountain town called Westcliff, Colorado. And uh, there's a beautiful theater there where we'll be playing. And I just I just can't wait. It's going to be beautiful. It's my favorite time of the year right now. I love this time of the year. It'll probably be nice and cool and it'll be gorgeous. So I'm looking forward to that. And then we play, we come back to California. And at the end of the month, uh, but the 22nd um, of October, we'll be playing at Georgetown at this wonderful little music box place uh -huh. in the mountains, not too far from Auburn. California and it's uh I've played there before and it's like playing in the most beautiful little wooden music box that oh. you could ever imagine okay. it's just really I'm looking forward to that and then we're going we're going to go on the road we'll be on the October 28th we'll be at the Colonel venue in Cody Wyoming and then we're on the 29th we're going to be at Jimmy's Roadhouse up in Montana and then we're going to be at our, my friend's uh private party at the pound in Gray Bull, Nevada and then we'll be in the Outlaw Saloon at Cheyenne, Wyoming, and then the Wyo Theater at Sheridan, Wyoming. And then we're coming back to California. I love, I do a Christmas show every year at this gorgeous ancient theater in Sutter Creek, California, in the gold country. Oh, wow. And I remember years and years ago, uh, and I was kind of at the peak of my career, and they were about to close the theater down. And they asked me if I would come. And of course, they really couldn't afford me. You know, but yeah. they had to pay more than they had probably ever paid anybody. <laughs> but it was, I had a whole band, so I had to be paid. But we gave them a really good price and we went down there and saved that theater. 
And so now every year at Christmas time, I go down and do a, I do a show down there. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. And then we got a bunch of Christmas shows out here um, around where I live. I live up in the mountains. I don't know if you remembered, we talked about this. Yes. I live near the, uh, in the old town of Virginia city up oh, in cool. Story County, Nevada, where, uh, and the reason that I'm involved with the wild horses, I, I actually moved here because we have what is arguably um, the largest uh, herd of uh, wild horses on private land, uh, excepting for Indian reservations in the United States, about 2,500 wild horses up here. Oh, and it's, it, I mean, they're in the yard every day. Oh. And uh, so I, I wasn't here very long before I realized the horses were in terrible trouble and they were a danger to themselves and to the motorists and so on. So we formed the Lemon Run Foundation. We've been raising money um, and helping the boots on the ground folks who don't get the big money that the big organizations do, but the people who really do the bulk of the work. Uh, the big organizations do a lot of legislation and stuff like that. But it's the little guys, the mom and pops who uh, actually do the bulk of the rehoming and rehabilitating of wild horses. Yeah, that's great. Well, I'll have to put the link uh, for that, uh, your 501c, and also for your uh, webpage, your social media. So Thank we, you. Right? Thank you. We want to get that out there so that folks can also order Devil by a different name. It's an amazing tune, and we all should listen to that, and, uh, you know, and everyone should share this video and everything you had to say. It was amazing words that you shared with us. We all need that right now. You know, um, I think the, I think you're right. I think this is a time when we need, we need, I think we need a father figure in the yes. country. I yes. think, and a mother figure. I think it, we, I think we need to have the comfort of that. Again, I really wish that uh, they would have president Biden do fireside chats on Sunday nights and just tell people all the good things that are happening because all we hear on the news all the time is what sells news, which is tragedies and terribleness and stuff like that if we could if we could just have the good news once a week i think it'd be a really good thing it sure would it sure would well we look forward to uh speaking to you soon again thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to talk to the hollywood times today and we will put this up on our official uh youtube channel the hollywood times official so that all of your people and our people can see this Oh, thank you. Judy, it is always a pleasure. I always feel like I'm talking to an old friend, and oh. I hope someday we get to go for a horseback ride together. I've got to come up. I really have to. Right? There's nothing like riding horses, as we talked about that before we got uh, live here. So, um, folks, if you haven't ridden a horse, find a local place and find <laughs> a horse to go ride, because it will bring you back to where God intended us to be happy that's pretty eloquent and that's really you know we were talking earlier that the indians say the horses will take our burdens yes and they sure will so and uh be well and uh, hopefully we can get together soon here uh you be well and be blessed and uh have a beautiful uh fall and a beautiful holiday season and uh light all around you and you do the same thank you all right thank you <laughs>